Welcome to Ironside's ICM Tutorials. This tutorial is part of Ironside's ICM Calculation Series, where we help you, the user, build your understanding of creating calculations by breaking the learning into small chunks. In a previous tutorial, we learned about the basic functionality of user-defined calculations. In that tutorial, we reviewed each section of the wizard using one single data source or data input. In this tutorial, we will expand on that calc stream by focusing on how to join, union, and anchor data sources. These features in ICM allow for multiple sources to be referenced and combined in order to produce new data sets and to further limit and shape data to exactly what is needed. As more calculations are developed, the model will continue to grow. We will use the following use case as a simple example for this tutorial. ISG Insurance pays its producers a percent of premium using a flat rate for both new and renewal individual business. It also pays its producers dollar per contract amount for group business. Payout amounts get summed with any manual payouts for their total compensation. In the previous tutorial, we created two credit calculations to segregate transactions into different types of business for which producers earn commissions. As you can see, there's only one data source being used. We now need to calculate the payout amount by first determining the correct rate to apply from the SP rate table. We will do this by creating a new user-defined calculation that joins data elements from SP rate to data elements in the results of the credit calculations. First, click on white space and select Add Calculation. Since this new calculation will calculate payout for individual business, we will type the name Pay001 Percent of Premium Earnings. Add a description, and then go to the next tab of the wizard. In the search box, we will start typing the name of the calculation that captures individual business. This calculation, which was previously created, is CRD001 Individual Business. Double click or drag this calculation as your primary data source. Then, select SP Rate and add it as a data source. Once you have both data sources, click on SP Rate to define the restrictions that will filter the data so that we will only get results on matches from both tables. Notice that the system has already initiated the join. For this example, we will match on product type, the start and end dates of the credits with the start and end date on the SP rate table, and the credit value with the min and max range of the rate table. Also, set component to individual premium since the rates for group and individual business are different. Once all the needed restrictions or logic are set, go to the Define Formula tab to create the formula. Use aggregate function sum and multiply the credit value with the rate from the table. Next, set the partitions for your results by dragging the columns Payee ID, Product Type, Period, and Component. Preview the results and then finish. The results from this calculation are illustrated by the blue section where anything not matching gets dropped, and new columns to the result set have been added. We will then create a second calculation identical to this one by repeating the same steps, only this time we will use the group business calculation as our primary source. Now that we have calculated the payout earnings separately for group and individual business, we will now combine all of the results together into one total payout. We will do this by creating a new user-defined calculation that will union the results of both earnings calculations. First, click on the white space and select Add Calculation. Type in a name and a description, and then go to the next tab of the wizard. In the Define Data Sources wizard, 
add pay 001 as a data source. Then drag pay 002 underneath pay 001. When you click on the pay 002 data source, you will notice the wizard automatically auto matches or unions source columns. Although the column names in our data sources are the same, Columns with different names can still be unioned. However, the columns must be of the same data type in order to union them. This means that text fields must be unioned with a text column, date with another date column, and numerics with numerics. On the Define Formula tab, use the Sum Aggregate function and drag Value. Next, Drag all of the columns from pay 001 to define the partitions for this calculation. For this example, we will want a total payout amount, so we will partition on payee ID, product type, and period. When we union, we layer in distinct records, or add rows, from one source with those of another source along the same partition. The results from a union are illustrated by the blue section, showing that all distinct records from all sources will be part of the output, and any records with duplicate key fields will aggregate the calculated value. Now that we have calculated earnings, we will determine each payee's total payout by joining the results of total earnings with any manual payouts that have been added to the SP Manual Payout table. Since not all payees will have a manual payout, we will anchor the primary source to ensure that we get results for every payee with earnings. Click on the white space and select Add Calculation. Type in a name and a description, and then go to the next tab of the wizard. In the Define Data Sources tab, add Pay003 as the primary data source, and then drag SP Manual Payouts as a secondary source. Now we will join the tables. The system will automatically join on payee ID. We'll also need to join on payout date, where the date is between the correct period. We have not yet anchored our primary source, so when we preview, notice that we only see one payee. To anchor, Right-click on the primary source and select Anchor Base Source. Now when we preview, notice that we see both payees, even though the first payee does not have a manual payment for the period. Anchoring allows records from the first source to be returned, even when there is no matching record in the second source. When we define the formula for this calculation, keep in mind that calculations will drop records with null values. In this particular case, when we add total earnings with a null amount for manual payments, the result will be an empty value and will not show as a result. To ensure that we maintain all records, the formula will include an if condition to check if the amount on the manual payout table is empty. If it's empty, then we only use the amount from pay 003 total earnings. If there is a manual payout, then we add it to total earnings. A few cautions to keep in mind. To ensure expected results are maintained, you must partition only with fields from the primary source. If you use fields from a secondary source, any records not part of the secondary source will get dropped regardless if the primary source is anchored. Any restrictions set in the last step will break the anchor feature, forcing all conditions to be met for the result set. After calculating the model, you can now see the results. In this tutorial, we reviewed how to use multiple sources in user-defined calculations, we walk through how to join data in calculations, how to union data in calculations, and how to anchor data sources to get the results needed. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please check out additional tutorials on our website.